All right. Happy Sunday, everyone. Thanks for jumping in. As usual, a bunch of stuff to discuss. Uh, but to start with, I would like to ask um, a for a volunteer for note taking for the call, primarily identifying actionable tasks, uh, interrupting us and identifying who's responsible for those tasks, and summarizing the list of actionable tasks at the end of the call. Is there someone who can help us today? Sure. Yeah, I can take it. All right. Perfect. Yada, right? Okay. Yep. Sounds good. So, um, first of all, we are kind of focusing on the first Kaggle submission right now. So, uh, there are a bunch of things that are going into that. We're trying to bridge communication between uh, different teams, make sure we have all the moving pieces together for, to make that uh, impressive and valuable first submission. Um, I'm going to be kind of merging lots of pieces together, jumping on a call uh, with uh, all of the teams individually and kind of getting to the trenches to, you know, on the ground stuff uh, because I've been lately focusing on, you know, a bunch of other stuff. So hopefully that, um, that will help us all converge into uh, one direction. And hopefully, you know, Monday, Tuesday, we have um, a much better polished uh, kind of vision of the submission for, for each of the teams. So the other thing I'm kind of, I need help with um, ideation of this post submission webinar. So need someone to help create a Google doc that represents the web page. We're going to have to, to promote this webinar. Uh, so basically we need all the pieces that we need on the web page. I'm thinking of, positioning team leaders on the page in terms of their backgrounds, what they were doing for each of the tasks and teams, and basically making sure that whoever uh, sees that webinar, and those can be journalists or medical professionals, they have a very good summary of what we were working on in the past two weeks and what are you know, the, the end goals of, of this webinar. So primarily communications tasks, if there's someone uh, that can help with that, that would be great. Is there anyone? Yada, Tyler? I'll have a, I'll have a look at it. My brain's just like, uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. just a, yeah, I think it's just day, days and days and days of doing this thing. And maybe you like, can yeah. actually work with Andrew because um, he's very, very good at, you know, taking abstract things and visualizing them and maybe he'll, he'll help with this. So we want to kind of, um, to summarize, we want to like be able to talk about what each group has done in not, in less technical terms and more sort of, yeah. um, generalist layman speak rather than. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. I'll, I'll see what I can do with that. Sounds good. All right. Um, Tyler, I can, I can also help with that. Um, that however, that, that, however would, that would be great. I think yeah. it's, it's going to need a few people because a few different people are going to need to be able to talk to team leaders and work. I mean, obviously we're getting kind of daily summaries and I'm, and I'm here every day. So I'm kind of getting a, bot, a rough idea what people have been doing, but there's only really task uh, VT that I've got any like on the ground experience. Yeah, and it's actually a good point for, for me to bring a little insight into like my recent discovery, as weird as it sounds. Like, bef like for the past two weeks, I generally thought that Task Geo is going to have a separate submission, but uh, I just realized uh, yesterday or two days ago, and I think Daniel Linderberger also came to the same conclusion only recently, is that Task Geo is really the horizontal team, similar to NLP team or ML team, uh, data set team, that is going to provide very valuable pieces for the actual submissions for three other tasks, the risk factors one, transmission one, and VT uh, submission one. So um, we're going to try and figure out what are those pieces and how to properly structure, structure them into notebook. So yeah, that, that was my discovery. If there are other people that, um, you know, didn't know about this uh, aspect, like th this is a real thing. Like they are actually working across different teams and creating tools and technology to 
uh, make uh, the individual teams much stronger. I did kind of wonder about that because I kind of got the impression that Geo were doing uh, demographic related things and I were like, demographics kind of is a risk factor and it is kind of a vaccines and therapies. And I were like, are they kind of working on to several of the same things? And I were like, I'm, but I figured there was just you no, know, I, I, I figured there was just a crossover rather than, but they were still doing their own thing. I didn't realize it was, yeah, like I said, um, an, a, a team that's working with all the teams in, in their own way. Yeah, which, which is great and which is very impressive. And um, I'm excited to learn a bit more about the, the details, what they've produced so far. So hopefully we accomplish that after this call. All right, sounds good. So the next piece is coordinators progress, onboarding coordinators versus team coordinators. Um, any update on the medical community coordination? Tyler, you, you wanna? Yeah, we've, um, I think with communications and coordinator, we've had someone come on board. Yeah. It was this Maria Milan, age Maria something person, right? Yeah, Maria Milano, I think it is, who, uh, I can't pronounce your name, Evgeny. Mm-hmm. Um, he recommended in his, um, but I've, we've not, there's not been any more discussion with her yet. I've not seen her online yet, but um, I should really reach out to her and try and work out because um, we are getting more and more people with medical knowledge, medical experience. And I want, I want to make sure that they're properly supported and communicated and brought up to speed. And I am not the person to do it more than anything. Um, Maya did mention yesterday she would be help, willing to help out with regards to um, the calling and boarding. Yep. Yeah, calling and boarding for medicals, medical spe people specifically. And that's something I'm taking into account. But I've still not really had a chance to speak to Maria Milano yet. And she's um, mm. uh, South, South American Chile, I think. So her time zone is going to be close to yours. Yeah. It's a case of maybe she's going to be coming on soon, but I don't know when she's going to be available. But yeah, can, uh, can you hear me? Yep. Hi, yeah. Evgeny. Right. Yeah, Evgeny. Uh, so Evgeny, uh, I invite Maria. Maria, she 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 is perfect for this role, but unfortunately, she doesn't have so much time. Uh, she has like one one and a half hours per day to help us, and weekends difficult for her. But uh, during the weekend, she can at least establish this process, and maybe someone who uh, later join us can can help. But she uh, she definitely uh, will help. Yeah, I think that's plenty of time for her to kind of give us structure and then we can find specific people to dedicate to pieces of, of that structure and process. And mm -hmm. yeah, again, uh, what, whatever she can contribute, it will be extremely helpful. Yeah, it's basically her job, which she yeah. does it every day. To es up. Especially given the fact that, yes, all of these, you know, different kinds of professionals are, uh, you know, they don't have as much time uh, to, to help us, but they're willing to. Um, I hope everyone checked out the uh, epidemiologist interview that I've sent over uh, yesterday evening. If not, please check this out. Uh, it's, it's basically one of the first attempts to bridge the communication between uh, you know, our community and uh, these kind of external medical people and to better understand why they're here, what they're doing and how they can help. So hopefully we produce more of these, but also this will help uh, even in terms of showing other medical experts how medical experts are already helping us. Okay, so probably worth uh, reaching out to uh, Maria and just asking her for a small, um, you know, list of of things. She she she, uh, she will uh, describe the process like how how to mm -hmm. like, organize, but. Uh, um, I can I can guide, guide guide her to whom she should talk about like people from medical side and people from our teams uh, who should talk to. Her. Yeah, I my guess is Tyler Ogley and Yada. What do you guys think? Yeah, we are kind of coordinating <coughs> between people. Um, yeah, it's, I mean, I'm I'm around the most, so I'm probably going to be one of the easiest to catch. I have not been around as much today, but I've sort of been aware of things. I've just not really processed it. Um, but yeah, yeah, she can, I'm absolutely fine to reach out to me. And I mean, I can message her if it's easier just to be able to make it 
clear that I'm a person to speak to. And we need to, yeah, we need to work out a whole process to be able to, I mean, we do kind of have like domain expert communications as a channel right now. And I've sort of been sending people with medical experience to there, but no one's using it. And I, I, we, we have someone doing medical expertise onboarding or like, communications but i don't know what they've been i've not heard and we've not heard from them yeah i've not heard from them in at least a week yeah let's, so. let's make it a point for today just to you know move towards that direction mm -hmm. okay okay sounds good um the next point discussing human resources challenges and team needs progress probably tyler you would be the best person or yada um yeah uh, we've had Frontline medical doctors popped up on intro introducing earlier on today. I've not really dealt with them yet because again, I don't know the person to send them to because I know we're going to be making this onboarding, but I know it's don't exist quite yet. Um, somebody popped up and from data, it's a Mike, Mike honey popped up and asking for to be included in a daily stand up and also to try and, expand help help expand out the uh, the data sets team because there's always it says there's only seems to be two people right now so brandon and and mike honey seem to be the only ones in there currently doing anything and they're wanting to have a little bit more support as in like time support but also a little bit more pro profile so people can talk about what they're doing so more people who turn up and see these calls can be aware of what what's needed mm -hmm. start of it um regards to Oh, um, coordinators, uh, we're going to have a call tomorrow. The onboarding, the coordinators are going to have a call tomorrow to get together just as lot to, to finalize the, the process of onboarding and make sure it's all um, a, one, a, one, a streamlined single system rather than like several potential options. And, and that way we can got that we can hopefully automate some of it or with a bit of help from other people or at least have it consistent around the clock and make sure we've kind of got all the time zones covered because I'm not sure right now like people in Australian and uh, yeah we like need plus, some plus form seven of... plus eight yeah plus seven plus eight hours kind of time zone I think we're not sure how we're doing on that section of the I think I don't know, I think Yada maybe I don't know yeah yeah or submit so maybe Yada might be able to cover that gap depends on when she's around and available obviously but we need to ideally, just like everything like this, we need to have um, redundancy. So we need to have more for every time zone in case there's times when obviously people are not available because we're not all available all day long, every day, nobody is. So it's something we need to be mindful of. But right now we've got like the five of us doing that. Um, we've got me, Ogley, Lesia, who's helping with coordination, but she's also doing it from her team, uh, Anson, and now Yada, who's joined us as of yesterday. And it Did seems it? like, oh, sorry. It seems like oh, there's someone else who reached out called Fringes. I'm not sure if I'm saying her name correctly. Who's who created a HubSpot for new volunteers? So I, I'm adding yeah, her to. I, yeah, yeah. I saw a HubSpot pop up, but I've I've can't look onto it, and I haven't worked out what to do with that yet. But um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sometimes it's hard to know who's in what team doing what. There's things pop up, and I'm like, I don't even seen this name before. What are they doing? But. <laughs> Yeah, sometimes it's the magic of trying to work out what was happening. <laughs> anyway, that's the us from coordination and communications, I think. And Daniel's not here right now, so because he's having a family yes, so Shannon is here. I, I missed the team meeting yesterday, I'm afraid, but um, I've, I've been doing contests as well. Cool. Um, yeah. uh, in terms of the, um, the thing that you mentioned with Brendan and Mike Honey, like I've actually added uh, an extra team uh, reporting uh, for today, which is task data sets. So whenever we start the team reporting, we're going to start with, with that team and figure out their needs too. Um, in terms of the communications update, uh, just quick update. We're, we're working through uh, the new website. We're thinking about, you know, adding things and adding extra things. Uh, we're working through the podcast. Um, uh, process too. I think we can use some of the like uh, bits from the interview that I did with the epidemiologist to include in the podcast. So yeah, just ideating that. Uh, are there any uh, key items that you, Shannon, want to bring? Um, not really. I know I've noticed that um, some work is being done on the team roster spreadsheet. 
Um, I had some ARs for myself to do some merging, but it looks like someone else has already started doing that. Is anybody on the call uh, aware of uh, whether or not they're the one doing the work on that? Mm, I don't think so. I've had a look through the team roster, but I've not added in on it. Um, it's one of the things I was looking through when I was, I've made, um, I've made a basically a, a a task with not all the skills and we have are available to us, but a hell of a lot of the skills in the groups. But I want definitely, I would definitely want mind, especially like specialists in their field, like the like the data visualization people, like. I won't mind a list of the softwares or the, the processes or the languages they're using, same as like the machine learning people. Oh, the, the skills I, I, metrics or something? Yeah, the skill metrics. I've got the it? skills metrics mostly done. It's on the uh, it's on a task it's on a task somewhere. I can't remember where it is right now. I've got that many <laughs> things open. Um, I'll, I, it, there, there is a, t a skills metrics written up and done, and I've also started a um, uh, like a core values of Corona Y because nice. we've sort of been talking about it. I've uh, I've made a I've basically put my what I think would be core values, but I definitely would like to see a, as many people do the same thing as possible because if we crowdsource it, we might be able to go, oh, I like that phrasing in that way. And actually, I agree with that more than my terrible version of it. And uh, I've, I've put one up and um, I've basically put um, Arto's up as well. And I'd love to see a few more people's points of view on that as well. And obviously, I know we're all busy with a million pink things, but um, sometimes being able to refine our thoughts between us is a really good thing. And again, it comes back to messaging, communication, externalizing what we are doing, what we believe in, how we stand. And this is going to help with regards to what the website says, how it comes across, onboarding people, making sure they understand our mission, our ideas and our points of view. Um, it's just about trying to, again, streamline the ideas and thoughts and processes and ways, the way we look at things. I'd like to think mine's pretty good, but there's definitely room for improvement and there's stuff that I can't even think of, but, it's yeah. a starting point. Somebody had to start it, and that's why I'm starting to get used to that somebody has to start it. Sometimes I jump in somebody else's start, but somebody's got to do something. Exactly. Just just do it. That's one of the, the values that I think are very important. And yeah, I checked out your list of values. I really like it. And I do think, yes, that crowdsourcing, kind of this meritocracy is the way to go. And, you know, we all have our different perspectives. Like, for example, I wouldn't necessarily agree that you know, calling the transparency painful is a good wording because it's actually like, I enjoy it. Like, I'm happy that everything is transparent. Yeah, you, you, you do, but it is painfully transparent. The way, reason why I've described it as painfully transparent is because... It takes an because effort, yeah. It's, it, it, it's, it takes effort and vulnerability. There is a vulnerability to being completely open in every way. I mean, like how many organizations basically document their daily meetings and the weekly meetings and everything and let anyone watch it if they want. Not many people do it. Even the most open organizations have closed spaces. And I'm sure well, there's times we might have to have closed conversations, but for the most part, the discussions are available for anyone because we have an organization that anyone can walk up and join. So it's yeah. by definition, sure. anyone can be in it. So anyone can be in the team. So it has to be open and honest and clear and transparent. And to the point where we sometimes exactly will make mistakes or we'll make choices and we'll try stuff and we'll learn from them, but that we'll learn. From, it's about learning from the mistakes, quote unquote mistakes. And yeah, painfully transparent is kind of the way I described it. But again, if someone else comes up with a better way of saying it, that's perfectly fine by me. I'm not, I'm not precious about it. Yep. Sounds good. All right, so let's jump into the team reporting. Uh, and we're gonna start with the new team, new task data sets, which kind of existed before. We just didn't really pay much attention to it, but the, the groundwork and the foundation that Brandon was creating is amazing in terms of all the amazing features that he enriched the data set and all the people that were helping him across this journey. So it's finally a time to acknowledge that as a horizontal team and give them you know, time to communicate to us and tell us what, what kind of problems and blockers they have and what kind of help they need. So Brandon, I'll let you lead this one. Sure. Um, so one of the blockers that we had up until basically yesterday was that we just didn't have a shared space. Um, but I started a Google bucket, which has infinite storage space and should be using credits and stuff. So um, I, I posted the link to that in several channels. If you want to upload data sets or uh, save files intermediately between when you're processing and when you need to download it, feel free to use that bucket. It's, it's for the entire group. Um, Quick the, question on the that. 
Can sure. you uh, create some process to document the estimates for spending just so we understand how, you know, soon we're going to uh, get, you know, the 5,000 that we received uh, you know, spent? Definitely. Yeah. So the, it automatically makes budget reports or something. So I can share those with the groups and, and sort of show how much is being used by what services, whatever. It's all in Czech crowns because I'm in the Czech Republic, but it should, it should be workable. <laughs> all right. Sounds perfect. Um, let's see. Secondly, there's a Trello board with all of the data sets that I could manage to find, um, both in different Slack channels on other Trello boards. Um, I do need some help with that because I'm sure that there's other data sets out there that I haven't been able to add to the Trello board. Um, there's also a, a column for public data sets. So things that were not Corona Y created, um, anything that came from Corona Y has a label on it that it came from Corona Y. Um, the new data set, so version 7 uh, text data has been dumped also on that Google bucket, so it's just an add-on to v6. v6 is basically the base you want that, and then you'll just uh, merge it with whatever I uploaded for v7. Um, other things, let's see, Mike Honey is also in the channel, but we haven't really, you know, created tasks other than, like, get the Trello board up, run, up and running, get a shared space, uh, start documenting where all the data lives, and then make that information available. Um, so if somebody wants to come in and help us figure out how to take this horizontal group, then yeah. <laughs> Basically coordinator for specifically the test data sets team. Yeah. So some more of my time is being taken up by NLP tasks. Um, so, and that's kind of where I want to be. So if anybody's able to sort of take this, uh, um, take the coordinator position for data sets, I would be really grateful. But uh, at the moment, it's not so much work, so it should be okay. All right. Kind of like you kind of like need an administrator, don't you, just to do the administrative tasks and the and the tidying and the organizing and the linking things and the the recording of things, the administration tasks. Definitely, yeah. We need, yeah. We st I think we started. To, we've got a few people around with administrative skills, but there's just um, I'll have to look through our email lists and see if I can start reaching out to people specifically for because we're starting to get to the point where the the inflow of new people is not slow. I mean, I'm kind of assuming it's going to be slow today because Easter, you know, some people are just not going to be about looking for work to do. Um, right. And we'll see how tomorrow and the day after looks. But the flows as of yet, as of today and yesterday has been a lot slower. But again, we can, it's like... It's actually good it, because it takes, it's, it's, it gives us ability to, you know, focus on the process versus, you know, juggling all and routing all the people. So, right. Yeah. Because yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's it, we, we're going to have to at some point slow down the routing of new people in until we have more things to do. Yeah, we or, hit nine hundred people today, so that's hundred away from thousand. <laughs> All right. Uh, sounds good. So yeah, if there's a coordinator that uh, or like person with generally like project management skills, please uh, reach out to to Brendan and join Test Datasets. Uh, and we're, we're going to start from the um, vertical teams, uh, task uh, risk factors. Maya, go ahead. Hi, how are you? Uh, so uh, we are compiling uh, the final notebook, uh, gathering and normalizing results. Uh, today we had an amazingly beautiful uh, submission by uh, Mohammed Tviri and he made clouds of words and some visual representations that look so cuglish. That's so amazing. <laughs> it, it's not very meaningful, like, because it's kind of more, more, more of a beautiful side that is cuglish. Like, Sporter. it's meaningful, the output is meaningful, but normally those clouds, you can't do much with that. But it's kind of, you know, it looks great. So now I'm uh, kind of, you know, have peace of mind that we will have this um, visual side as, as well. And uh, yeah, and we are, we, are, we are collecting the outputs. Uh, we will need a lot of uh, um, expert input at this stage to make sure that our results are meaningful. Uh, but pretty much, yeah, we, we are fine. All right, sounds good. Next team, Gio, Daniel. Yes, hi everyone. Uh, yeah, so first of all, a couple of remarks on what you said before. Yes, we have been positioning ourselves as horizontal team for quite a while now, um, especially because uh, uh, there's not so many geo-related tasks in the Kaggle questions. 
and uh, those are already being treated by task risk so we we have been having this uh, collaboration with task risk for uh, for um, uh, for a while now um, and uh, well this goes also uh, links to what uh, Brandon was was asking so we've been sourcing a lot of uh, um, public data sets so we should have a talk about that we are planning to set up an automated pipeline to upload everything to um, to Google to Google Cloud um, as well and uh, maybe it would be good to have a discussion about that at some point um, to coordinate on that uh, other than that at uh, for, for progresses well um, today is Easter so it's going pretty slowly um, we've provided some tools yesterday to DataViz to source some data but uh, apart from that uh, well I'll say today it's uh, it's slow going and that's it I would say all right uh, next task, transmission, Christine. Hi, everyone. Um, yeah, we have, we have made uh, pretty good progress yesterday. Uh, we, our notebook is pretty close to final. We were just have to migrate it to Kaggle and add like, like a lot of like content explaining the methodologies, etc. cetera. And um, we also had some breakthrough in terms of uh, extracting certain information from the papers. But now we can extract um, the age, mean, mean or median age uh, from uh, patients or cases enrolled in the study. Uh, we'll make that available to anyone who, who think that would be useful for them after we get that um, cleaned up. Um, so today we'll be continuing to work on, you know, preparing for a table submission. Yeah. Sounds great. Thank you. Um, vaccines team, Dan Sosa. Hey everybody, happy Easter. Uh, yeah, just a couple quick updates. We've been updating and cleaning up our drug vocabulary because parsing out drug names is a tricky business, so we're continuing to do that. Um, we continue to train models for drug treatment extraction. Um, Christine and I are starting to get back a lot of annotations for the level of evidence classification task, but we can probably start working on automatically classifying level of evidence right now. And then also we've been working with Anton to figure out Google Cloud Storage and also um, what computation resources we have available given those shared credits. Sounds good. No blog. Perfect. All right, so we're good. We still have uh, two minutes for quick questions. Um, anyone has any questions, that's your time to, to speak up whether you're new or confused or any questions. Go ahead. All right. <laughs> um, so where is the database to see all of the volunteers and what they filled up out in the We have form so far. private sheet. You can mm -hmm. message me and I'll send you a link. Okay. Um, the reason why things like that have to be private is because it is, um, data protection laws and rules we have to mm. um, Speaking of privacy, um, Archer, I noticed that the, the team roster that gets auto-populated and is also being, I think, edited by people who are doing analytics, um, it was link shareable. I don't think that it should be. I think- I agree. Okay, so I turned, I turned it off. I just wanna make sure that's not gonna mess anybody up. If anyone uh, needs to be explicitly shared, I think that's what we should do. Yeah, they need to be added as a person with an account that we know of. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, so maybe before doing that, let's assemble a list of emails that we need to add. And um, right, add them. anyone with teen access also can view it. Yeah. Um, but okay, so um, who, who's gonna send me, or who's gonna take care of this, I guess? Tyler, you wanna help with that? Probably, yeah. Tyler, Tyler if you just wanna send me the list of people, I can also just do the permission switching. 
Yeah, yeah. I'll just well, I've, I'll have a look through myself. I mean, this honestly, it's getting to the point where I'm I'm digging through Google Docs and do, do, just looking at there's so many things that I'm like, well, that's old, that's new, that's irrelevant. It's a week old. <laughs> Something's a week <laughs> old in this organisation. It's like, it's just, well, it might as well be put in a bin at this point. It's starting to get to a point where I'm like, I'm going to have to start tidying things away. Like, this is a week old. It's out of date. <laughs> it's true. So, it's true. Um, okay, that's um, and then I guess Archer. I'll, um, I'll consider that my uh, I'll consider my, my evening's work. <laughs> nice. Um, Archer, in terms of calendars, are you now, I just want to check, are you now editing the main Corona Y calendar? Mm -hmm. Okay, I see like duplicate appointments going on and I can't tell which one is being updated. I'm not creating any new ones, so I'm updating one that you've created. Okay, I, okay, I'll have to sort out why it looks weird on my side then, but that's good to know. I get that sometimes with Google, when, it, <laughs> when, when one calendar generates it and another calendar sees it as well. It okay. can sometimes end up generate two of them. I get them when I have meetups and stuff. I end up with two two of the same thing in my calendar because it's been put on two calendars accidentally. Might okay, so. I'll have to look out for that then. Thanks for yeah. clarifying. Good question. Uh, if I want to add the meetings for like VT daily stand up, should I get permission so I can add those myself, or should I tell Shannon or you, Arthur, or someone to add those to the calendar? I would say go ahead and and create that. I've been um, trying to add Dan permission, but it hasn't been going well. I have to try again today. So in the meantime, he might actually need one of us to do it. Okay, I, I can create it. Just message me at the time. Okay. Yeah, there's no huge urgency. I was just wondering if I should wait for permission yep. or not. It kind of makes sense as team leaders should be able to add and edit team meetings mm -hmm. for everyone to be able to see. Because again, it goes back to transparency and accessibility. Yep. Totally. Um, in, in terms of all the documents being created, do you have like a central, like a parent uh, Google Drive where everything is being created out of or stored into? Uh, so here's how it functioned before. We had multiple Google folders, then we had the main one uh, in our G Suite. I think that like in general, we're using different places just because it's, you know, the, it's faster that way. We should mm -hmm. converge to one folder but I don't think that Google Drive is the most intuitive and you know, the most easy to use system uh, for us to treat it as the central uh, you know, place for, for things. That's why I think we're gonna keep creating things in different places, but then we're gonna have some central place. Like I think we have the project, project documents index or something yeah a sheet with all of this we've stuff. got we've got we've got an index i was looking through that yesterday because that was the thing i was going like that's out of date that's out of date that's out of date <laughs> yeah <laughs> and we, a half we, old. that's out of date now we do actually also have a directory structure if yeah. people we do. like that sort of thing we do do you uh, do you have the link to that tyler or because i don't know if everyone I knows will. it's there yeah I'll, uh, uh, it, basically there's a corona y google folder and that there's a corona y google folder and then there's, there's a number of folders inside that. And one of them is uh, like a resources kind of thing. And one of the, that has got like a spreadsheet with lots and lots of links that attach to all sorts of people's different own things all over. And right. some of them are inside that folder and some of them are obviously on people's owned by their own and then they've just added that link in because well, again we that was before we were like sticking everything in one place. It's Maybe true, it's never of completely opening them. And it can't be completely updated because like things go out of date as fast as someone makes them sometimes. So <laughs> exactly, we'd have, we don't want... we'd have to have a permanent sanitizer just keeping things clean. And I, yeah. and I am kind of starting to do it a little bit, but I'm also I'm, I've got the I don't want to delete things because some people might be using it and some people don't. And and it's that I don't know who's precious about what yet, and I need to sort of I yeah. just need to get to a point where I just start cleaning and go. I'll I'll save them all off if anyone wants to. I can get them later on, or we can we can maybe make a folder of like archives and old documents, and then make new versions of it. Yeah, that way. that's yeah. a couple of good points to discuss in the communications that's, meeting. But yeah. I I agree that like we can uh, create roadblocks for people to like. Okay, I want to create document. I have to create it in some folder in some G Suite account. Like the, the knowledge propagation and knowledge creation happens way faster than people questioning like where and how to put it. So let's just open up the floodgates and have a central document where we uh, put links to all of these pieces. Yeah, that makes sense, especially as a whole, because if we try and make it all in one place all the time, it stops people being, um, it 
produ reduces like a an element of fear that oh well is this good enough to go in there yeah people are going to see it i'm going to just have some it's, some people just play around with ideas until they've got something that looks all right and they go actually this is pretty good i'm now add this to the to the pile and then we can of exactly integrate it, integrate it or edit it or remove it depends on what it's needed because occasionally i've started to part problem i'm noticing is so many people are doing so many things it's hard to know if someone else is doing it until it's done it's true <laughs> and you're like it's absolutely true two 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 or three people could accident accidentally do the same thing because they are maybe they've notified people in one place but they had the other person looked in a different place which again it goes back to the idea of trying to have one yeah. song she had and, to sing off of and you know it, it enables this creative uh, redundancy and something uh, mm -hmm. something amazing that is not possible in a traditional or a corporate environment or a research institution where resource is so precious that you can't waste any money and like there has to be just one person working on a very specific thing and you can't afford you know five people working on it like this is a very different situation here where we're enabling this creative exploration and redundancy that, you know, we, we don't care how much, you know, money was spent. Like it's not about money at this point. Anyways, yeah. This is amazing. Just, like I stepped away for a day and the task that I was going to start working on today, it looks like someone has already started doing it. <laughs> Well, I, I had that yesterday with Daniel. I was like, well, I'm going to have a look at the website and I'm going to, I, I know I've been pointing it off, but are we going to do, um, so I'll start that post. And it's like, oh, it's fine. Somebody else is doing that on the website I'm looking at now. So three other people, I'm like, you've just taken my tasks off me. That's what I was going to do. I don't know what to do now. <laughs> it's okay. Just ask and someone will be like, help. <laughs> yeah. yeah but, but at the same time, every time I think that 10 people turn up with things to do and I'm like, I keep, I need to stop asking because I keep getting too many things. <laughs> All right. Sounds good, guys. Great call today. I'm going to wrap it up and upload the video shortly. Um, thanks, everyone. Happy Sunday. Happy Easter. Um, go, go get some rest. <laughs> right, thanks, guys. Yeah.